This is an overview of the writing prompt this week and our writer, Hamlin Garland. There's a picture. It comes from wikipedia.org. The writing prompt this week asks you to apply three of Kurt Vonnegut's characteristics of the short story to Hamlin Garland's story under the lion's paw. There were two problems that I noticed with the responses. Number one, many people did not mention Kurt Vonnegut in the response. And two, people did not mention Kurt Vonnegut and the video on the Works Cited page. These were your two main sources and they had to be mentioned. I want to go through the eight characteristics quickly so I can keep this around five minutes. Number one, use the name of a stranger, excuse me, use the time of a stranger in such a way that he or she will not feel that the time was wasted. The stranger is the reader. It is not a stranger in the story. Just because we have a stranger in Under the Lion's Paw happens to be a coincidence. Remember, these are eight general characteristics and every one of these characteristics can be applied to a short story, to a story, to a movie, and you do not have to have a stranger in every story that you read. Point two, give the reader at least one character he or she can root for. This is certainly true in this story because you can pick out any character, the Councils or the Haskins, and you're rooting for these characters. One character that you're not rooting for is Butler, who happens to be the villain and the antagonist. Every character should want something, even if it's a glass of water. Now, with the analysis, you should tell me what the characters want and what's the significance of what they want. It's not enough in these writing responses to state the obvious. I don't want plot summary. I just don't want you to, to regurgitate what's in the story. I want you to analyze it. So what is it that they want? And, uh, for example, Stephen Council wants a successful farm, but he also wants to help Haskins. What does that say about Stephen Council? And what does it say about Haskins, the hard work that he puts into his farm, only to have Butler raise the uh, price? Every sentence must do one or two things, reveal character or advance the action. This, uh, to me, is the most interesting characteristic, but few people wrote about this. Uh, if you think about the story, every sentence in the story reveals something about the character, Stephen Council and his hard work, Stephen Council uh, helping the Haskins. Um, this advances the action to help ask Haskins. Haskins gets involved with Butler. Um, Haskins uh, uh, tends his farm, makes it a success, and then Butler uh, takes advantage of him. The story is extremely tightly focused, and this is typical of a short story. Typically, typically you have one or two characters, a very concentrated plot, and uh, rapid action. Start as close to the end as possible. Uh, this is again a characteristic of the short story. Uh, for example, you begin with Stephen Council and Haskins, and you end with Haskins. So it, uh, the story really comes full circle. Number six was the most often talked about, but uh, most everybody ignored the second half of the characteristic. It states, be a sadist. In other words, make something terrible happen to your characters. This always happens. It happens in movies. It happens in TV shows. It happens in literature. It happens in stories. But it reveals something about their character. Stephen Council, as a hard worker, notice his name is spelled C-O-U-N-C-I-L. But could it also mean Council, as in giving advice? C-O-U-N-S-E-L. Also, um, Haskins, you see a lot about what he's made of. One of the most significant things is at the end when Butler ups the price, Haskins wants to kill him, but it's the laughter of his child that prevents him to, from doing this. Only one person mentioned that. That is extremely revealing about his character. Write to please one person. That could be anybody, the writer, the readers. Give your readers as much info as possible, as soon as possible, so they could finish the story themselves if cockroaches ate the last few pages. I like this point because this story is so tightly structured that if the last two pages were missing, you could still figure out what the story is about. It would be an interesting prompt to ask you to stop reading before the last two pages and see if you could predict, predict the ending. I imagine many people would give it a happy ending, but... It's not, a, well, you could argue whether it's a happy ending because he doesn't kill Butler. But anyway, I'd like to see a little bit more analysis and less plot summary. I'd like to see you avoid stating the obvious. Good luck on the next assignment. Thank you.